mobile internet, it's a complicated topic. We're going to give you a quick overview. Hi there, I'm Cherie. And I'm Chris. And we are the hosts of the Mobile Internet Resource Center. Now, we have been full-time traveling tech nomads since 2006, living and working full-time from various RVs and now even a boat. But all this time, staying connected and working online has been absolutely essential for us to be able to live this type of lifestyle. And we got asked the question so often about how we got internet to work remotely like this that in 2014, we made it our full-time job. So welcome, and over the years, we have expanded our team. Hello. <laughs> and we are blessed to rendezvous with Jen here. She's part of our team. And we're gonna give you a quick overview of the three primary ways that RVers and cruisers stay online, cellular, Wi-Fi, and satellite. Now, there is no perfect solution, and we know that's probably the answer that you want, <laughs> is what is the best mobile internet solution? But there's not one universal, one-size-fits-all, this is the best way to stay online for everyone, because everyone's needs are very, very different, and the options that are available are changing all the time. So something that somebody bought and set up six months or a year ago is completely different than what might be appropriate for you now. So we do have a lot of content on assessing your needs, but let's dive in to what the options are. Okay, the first option that RVers and cruisers use to keep online is cellular, and it is probably the most popular option that's out there. And the reasons are good because it cellular signal is in a lot of places. It has grown exponentially over the last decade to be a viable option for keeping connected as you roam across the country. It also can be blazing fast, especially as 5G is coming online and will continue to expand in the decade ahead. The cons of it is it can get pretty complicated. There are so many options for cellular and there are basically three components to getting the right cellular connectivity for your needs. First is selecting your gear. It is as simple as hotspotting off of your smartphone or doing tasks on your smartphone or even a tablet. A cellular enabled tablet can do a heck of a lot of stuff, especially if you put a keyboard on this. They have cameras and microphones. They're great for doing video conferencing with or even video broadcasting with. It's a great way to get a cheap plan and doing a lot of data right on this device. Next up, you can choose mobile hotspot devices. These are devices that you typically purchase from your cellular carrier and they have a battery in them so they can run independently and they take the cellular signal just like your phone uses and then converts it into your own personal Wi-Fi hotspot. They're called mobile hotspot devices, but they might also know them as jetpacks or MiFi's, which are just branding terms. So these are a great option. Uh, they're simple plug and play solutions and they might be a fit for your solution. You can also get complex and go with cellular embedded routers, some even with multiple modems inside, so you can be connected to multiple carriers at the same time. And a router also allows you to create a much more robust local area network for keeping all of your devices, your laptops, your TVs, your light bulbs, maybe your scale, maybe your watches, keeping them all online and combining multiple internet sources, maybe cellular, Wi-Fi and eventually satellite, all running through the same router. So this is more of an advanced setup. And then next is picking your data plans. And this is something that is changing all the time. You have to first select which carrier or more pertinent, probably multiple carriers, because there are three, well, maybe four in the nation right now. You got Verizon and AT&T and T-Mobile coming up in third, but really on a trajectory to compete with the big two wow. and US Cellular is a regional carrier that is large enough to keep an eye on. And then you have to pick the data plans. You need plans that are suitable for the device that you are using. So if you are using a smartphone, you need a smartphone plan. If you're using a jetpack or a router, you need a data only plan that is compatible with the device you want and provides the amount of data that you need to keep connected in your travels. 
And of course, each network is going to have their strong spots in each area of the country and where you visit. So it makes sense to have multiple carriers because in one location, one carrier may work better than another. And it could be completely different at your next location. Next is your signal enhancing strategy. How are you best going to optimize that wireless signal that could be coming from a dozen miles away from a cellular tower so that you can get the best data performance? There are, of course, cellular boosters like this WeBoost Drive Reach. There are others out there by HiBoost, Hi Smooth Talker, CellFi, and others. And these will boost your signal electronically and create a boosted signal. But for data, they may not always be the best choice because of a core technology called MIMO. That's multiple in, multiple out. And with devices that have antenna ports like this Netgear Nighthawk or cellular embedded routers, using an external antenna that has multiple antenna leads or using two separate antennas can actually produce better results for signal enhancing. Now we have a bunch of content on all of these topics with cellular. If you go to our cellular resources page, you can dive deep into each of these topics. Another option from staying connected on the road is using a Wi-Fi access point. And a lot of people, when they start out, think that this is going to be a great solution. A lot of times, campgrounds, marinas, restaurants, libraries, they will provide a free Wi-Fi source. However, what you may find is that it's not always the best solution. The signal might not be that strong or there could just be so many people using it that the speeds that you get are just not going to be that great. If you just have really basic needs like needing to check your email a few times a day, then this could be a perfect solution for you. But if you need to really be connected all day long, if you're doing a lot of data intensive activity like video streaming, then using free Wi-Fi may not be the best answer. There is equipment that you can use to try to improve the signal, but really all that equipment is going to do is help bring in the signal from far away closer to your RV. It's not gonna do a whole lot to make the signal faster. So if you go test the signal at the campground store or wherever it's provided and, and it's not that strong, no amount of equipment, no type of equipment is going to improve that signal. The types of equipment available are range from very inexpensive equipment that you can put on your window up to very expensive equipment that you in would install on your RV, on your roof or something like that. So before you make that type of investment, you just need to really consider, are you going to be in places where there is a good enough Wi-Fi signal to boost? And if, there, if you're not gonna be in that situation that often, then that might not be the best type of equipment for you to invest in. Now, the third way that RVers and cruisers can try to get online is via satellite, internet from space. And the dream of this is very exciting. The idea of satellite internet is that you can get connected from absolutely anywhere. As long as you can see, you know, get a clear view of the sky, the satellite can reach you. You're connected anywhere you try to go. And that sounds great in theory. But the theory and the reality of satellite are pretty far apart. So you have to actually understand is satellite going to matter for you? Now, the thing that, that the most important thing with satellite is it can be a great solution in the places where it is the only solution. So if you are out in some extreme rural places, deep boondocking, places like that, sometimes a satellite setup is not just the best option, it is the only option to get online and it can be great. Um, in other places, particularly in more urban places, well, satellites have capacity issues just like cellular and everything else does. And, well, satellite might be overloaded and not work particularly well in a congested area. Now, and the other very important thing with satellites is your dish, whatever you're using to receive the satellite signal, needs to have a clear line of sight to the satellite. So if you're camped someplace in the woods like we are right now, there's not necessarily a clear line of sight that will always be able to see the satellite. You might be going in and out of service as the low Earth orbit satellites pass overhead and behind trees. And a really exciting time for satellite. There's really give you the option to be connected just about any place you go on the on the road, on the water, even around the world. But know the trade-offs, know what's actually available versus what is promised in coming soon, and understand the catches. Now definitely understand, satellites are not going to be the universal replacement for cellular, even as some of these next generation technologies evolve. So it's gonna be a great thing for remote areas. It's gonna be a great complement for cellular over time. 
it's not going to be the be all and end all anytime soon. So we've got a ton, a ton of content at the Mobile Internet Resource Center here. So please subscribe to this YouTube channel. We put out a lot of news stories and video updates. Also, we've got an Internet for RVers and Cruisers Facebook group that is free to anyone to come and bring their basic questions and get pointed to resources. And then, of course, the mother load, a huge amount of resources is at mobileinternetinfo.com, our website, where there is a just ridiculous amount of free content, guides, things that you can dive deeper into. But if you really want to go deep, well, we've got our mobile internet aficionados. These are the members that support our site. None of this would be possible without our MIAs. We are member funded. We don't take sponsorship. There's not third party advertising and we don't take compensation from other vendors and manufacturers. It is all funded by our community. And for their support, they get a lot of extra resources like our in-depth guides, our classroom. We even have a video classroom with interactive office hours with our staff. We have forums with interactive guidance and monthly webinars with Q and A's with our members to answer their questions. We also have a bunch of reviews and additional content to help our members keep up to date on their options and select their right mobile internet setup. So if mobile internet is going to be an important part of your lifestyle, please do consider becoming a member, get the in-depth content and additional assistance, and help us make it possible to continue to support our RVing and cruising and nomadic communities. There's so much to cover and it's so important for so many of us to stay connected. So hopefully we will see you there. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.